You all know by now that I'm a big fan of Gary Neville when it comes to his Manchester United analysis, and this week is no different after what was a passionate rant from Gary on Monday Night Football about Manchester United's problems. Now, as always with these videos, you know what I do. I'm going to run through what Gary had to say, say whether I feel he was right or wrong, and add my own opinion onto it. And when discussing United this time, Gary went into great detail about his disdain towards his United squad, how he feels like he doesn't like it, the problems at the club, the cultural issues, the deep lying problems in the structure, and what he feels is the utter shambles of a search for a sporting director. How can it be that four players who have never been businessmen, never managed the club, never coached, never been sporting directors, are, are, are put forward for this amazingly difficult role at the most difficult time at the biggest club in the world? It's a shambles. So, as always, please watch this video to the end and make sure you get your comments down below as well because I feel this video from Gary is a real vent now that the season's effectively over. Names are named, fingers are pointed. For me, a lot of United fans feel how Gary Neville feels and that's why I want to run through this video. Now, before I get started, if you are new to United People's TV, welcome. Make sure you subscribe down there, get involved in the community, but let's get straight into the video. Now, the first point that Gary raises is something that I personally have felt for a very, very long time. So this idea that this Manchester United team is better than it suggests, it's not. It's a really average team for what Manchester United needs to be. And as a group of players, I don't like them. How many players inside this United squad can you say you have a genuine affection for? You know, the likes of Rashford, Lingard and McTominay because they're academy players. I've always got a natural affection towards those, but maybe De Gea, Shaw, Lindelof. There are only, a, I would say, only a handful of players inside that squad that I feel want to play for United. And question marks are being said about De Gea now, but that shouldn't be the case. Is it genuinely too much to ask for players who want to play for your club? Maybe it is in the modern day, and maybe this is something we need to get used to, but I don't think it is. You look at the likes of Wolves, Liverpool, City, Spurs, so many players in the Premier League that genuinely want to play for the clubs that they are playing for. Maybe it's a, a consequence of the condition of our club at the moment, which is, let's be honest, a shambles, as Gary Neville pointed out. But I don't think it's too much to ask. And I don't think United can truly move forward until that changes, until the fans start to like the team again. You should always like your players in your, at your club, but it's very hard to like United at the moment, isn't it? You know, it seems like they've downed tools after Solskjaer was confirmed as manager, and it's very easy to be frustrated. And I agree with Gary here. I don't particularly like this squad. And he does go on to discuss it in more detail about what he feels is properly wrong with this squad at the moment. But what I would say is that that... Tottenham team, when we think back towards it and the characters that it had in it, the poor characters that it had in it, and we used to ridicule them at the time, and we used to really sort of, you know, when we like, you, you go to watch teams all the time in the There's Premier League. There's more quality you, in this United squad yeah, than but Tottenham No, but you, you, grow, you grow to like teams and you grow not to like teams. I've never not liked a Manchester United team. I've always thought, to be fair, the team can win, the team can lose, the team can draw, but I really struggle with this team to watch them. I really struggle to feel that they really mean, I, you know, and then what pains me more is that the two clubs that I dislike the most, that I watch on Saturday night and I watch here tonight, I see everything right. I see a, a spirit, a, a hunger, a, a resilience, a toughness, a going to the end. Forget the quality, the quality's there as well. They've got a lot better quality. I'd genuinely like to know if anybody disagrees with what Gary has had to say here, because the players don't care. The attitude isn't there. The effort levels aren't there. And it's the absolute basic for a football team to have the effort levels. I know it's not the be all and end all, that if you don't run further than your team, it doesn't make you a worse footballing team. Football is a hell of a lot more than just running. But when it comes to the true basics of the game, running is everything. And United just don't do the basics right at all. You know, you can build a multi-million pound house, but if you build it on sand, it's not gonna be stable. And that is what United have done for the last six years just chucked loads of raw materials, the most expensive raw materials in the world, on top of a situation and a foundation that doesn't allow it to be stable and grow. 
And that is a major problem. And until that is truly fixed, I don't think United will ever move forward. And as Gary points out right there, it's Liverpool and City's rise at the same time as United's fall that's making it 10 times worse. And bear in mind, a few years ago, Liverpool, they were still signing the likes of Voronin. They had Brendan Rodgers as manager. They were selling Suarez. They weren't in the best of positions, but they got the right manager in with the right attitude, the right staff behind him, and they've worked wonders. And it's not impossible for United to do exactly that. But we just have to be aware of our own problems. And I'm not sure we truly are as a club, clearly, because the problems have existed for years now. So how do United go about fixing it? Gary has a stark warning for United fans in terms of the expectations next season, but it's clear for him what needs to be done. But actually, the foundations, and Oli's got, I think, a two-stage... There's a two-stage job for Manchester United now. The idea that Manchester United should talk about a Championship and Premier League title-winning team at this moment is nonsensical. Forget it. The first thing they have to do is cleanse the dressing room, cleanse the club. I feel Gary, again, is right here to temper expectations because United are so far off. We're 29 points behind City. We're 28 points behind Liverpool. I would genuinely say that right now, Wolves are in a better position as a football club to challenge for the title than Manchester United are. That is how major and widespread this rebuild has to be at the club, root and stem. There's not any part of the club which is run perfectly. Maybe you could say commercially, but that's not, I don't care about that. I'm speaking just from a footballing perspective. And that is the major problem, because if you look at the squad, it is cancerous. It really genuinely is. We've gone from teams being leaked under David Moyes to the disrespect shown towards Louis van Gaal and his sort of tough love ways to players just straight up ignoring and arguing with Jose Mourinho to players seemingly downing tools after Solskjaer was confirmed and got back in their lazy boy armchairs. This is the same sort of squad. For six years, the same problems have existed. Ever since Fergie went, the naughty boys have come out to play and they've taken over the dressing room. Like a boa constrictor, just tightening its grip. That is what has happened to United's dressing room. And until that is sorted, we are absolutely screwed. Until it's cut out and thrown away and replaced with the right sort of dressing room, Solskjaer doesn't have a chance. And that is down to him. That is down to Solskjaer to make sure that this dressing room gets back to what it should be at United. And that's not players controlling everything. That being said, as Gary points out next, the dressing room is a clear problem. But until the structures behind the scenes are sorted as well, it will just be like polishing the surface. It won't sort the issues out that massively exist at United. Man Manchester United play, I think what they should do to start with is shift the people who are in charge of the club this moment in time back into the business side of the club, back down to London. I think they should put a new football department in charge who are the best in class, not have played at the club before, I've got 200 games for the club, or have been at the club 15 years, or have been a fan. The best in class football operators, they've got three here by the way, not just, not none, three. And basically, underneath that, then put the right recruitment people, the right technical people. Then the manager and the coach will find it a lot easier. And then you get the right spirit in the dressing room, the right, right group of people in the dressing room. We've seen one out here tonight, like Harry Maguire, and I'm not, to be fair, disrespecting Leicester. But he's a type of character that you would expect to see. Let me finish, Dave, please. And <laughs> from that point then, you might then get into the top four and finish fourth and third. And you might develop a team that the fans like again that we can see, hear and respect professionally. And from that moment, that might take two or three years, you can then go on and you can go for the title. This is a five-year project. United are not going to go from where they are today to win the title in the next 12 to 18 months, two years. is isn't going to happen. So think about a plan that's going to work, but you've got to get the right people in first. Gary is, is so on the money here that it makes you wonder why United haven't rang him to get him involved in the club in some capacity. We need the best in class. We need that plan year by year to catch up with Man City. And we need to fix the gaping problems with the structure of the club. It's so obvious. And I think that's what angers me the most and probably what angers Gary the most as well, is it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see the problems at United. They're all too clear to everybody and they have been for years and years and years. Yet the club has sat back and let the problems fester, let the problems get worse. 
throw more money at it, close your eyes and hope, but it's not fixed the problem. And that is a major issue in itself. And it almost makes you wonder whether United are all too aware of the problems, but have no intention of ever fixing them. Simply because the Glazers are making money, they don't really care about the madness that's going on as a football club. They're making profit. And if that is the case, that's the scariest thing that United fans could ever wish for. Because that means the problems won't ever be fixed until the Glazers go. And why would they sell something so profitable? I don't know. But saying all of this, there is one person who is the focus of the disdain by United fans, and that is Ed Woodward. And Gary Neville names him as a big problem at the club. I, I, I genuinely do not know. Look, the first three or four years out of Sir Alex Ferguson's era, I can explain. David Gill and Sir Alex leave within 10 minutes of each other. So it's always been a, a two-man job. One business person, financial person, one manager. So I can understand why Manchester United went for David Moyes, who was somebody to be fed, fit in line with what Manchester United historically have gone with. I can understand why they moved someone who was within the club, because when Peter Kenyon left, David Gill took over. So that's, that's fine. Ed Woodward comes in. But Ed Woodward's had seven years now at this. Seven years. So I think he's had his chance, personally. I think he's had his chance at running the football side of the club. No problem with keeping him in the club at the, the business side. Because the, the revenues, the operating profit, I would imagine, are pleasing the Glazer family enormously. So that's fine. But he's had his chance in running the football side of the club. So now you have to think about, right, OK, that two-person structure's not worked for the first three, four years. It's now a situation whereby they've got to bring a different structure in. It's a, it's a big football club. It's a monster of a football club. And they need to bring in the best in class. Again, Gary's spot on here. And I swear to God, it must only be United who give people and players six, seven years to prove themselves. Because Ed Woodward, he replaced David Gill. Gill, by the way. I'm listening. He replaced David Gill and he's failed miserably. Absolutely miserably. Yet six, seven years down the line, he's still in the job. Phil Jones, he's been at Manchester United for eight years as a player. He's two years away from a testimonial. Come on. This doesn't happen at elite football clubs. It really shouldn't. Two, three years. If it doesn't work, sorry, it hasn't worked. Off you go. But at United, we seem to be comfortable in giving players five, six, seven, eight years. Managers, give David Moyes a six-year contract. Why not? Just the decisions... And the decision-making process at United is truly baffling. And it sickens me to the stomach what Ed Woodward has done at Man United in the last six years. Don't come at me and say, ah, oh, look, he's given loads of money to all the managers to make big signings. That's the only thing he's done. He has no plan, no structure whatsoever. All Ed Woodward does is close his eyes, throw a dart at the board. Oh, Fabregas, we'll go after him. Oh, Gareth Bale, he's available. Go after him. Woodward is all about marquee signings for marketing purposes. That is his motto as United CEO. And that has helped create this cancerous dressing room and the mercenary attitude that now exists at this club that wasn't there when Fergie was there. Yes, we did marquee signings. We got Van Persie from Arsenal. We got plenty of marquee signings under Fergie. But they were sat in a squad that was well established with respect and attitude towards the manager, towards the club, in a dressing room that wanted to play for United. That doesn't exist now. We've just got loads of marquee signings all sitting there trying to be the top cock of the dressing room. That's the issue. And Woodward is the major reason why that now exists at our club. And Gary is absolutely right to name Woodward and criticise him publicly because it's about time that those in the media, those with influence and maybe links to United start doing that because the change has to happen. And as Gary points out here, if it was him in the job, he'd be all too aware of his own shortcomings. What's happened is over the last five years that the club has ricocheted and bounced like a pinball from one manager to another with different philosophies. They've been pulled around. They've been played in the transfer market time and time again. And forget whether he, I would have agreed with it or not agreed with it at the time. If you've not delivered success on the pitch, and football clubs are about performance and delivering success, if you've not delivered on the pitch for five, six, seven years, there comes a point where you've got to say, well, hang on a second, you can't just keep being the coach. There's got to be people above that have to step, step aside and move into a different role. Because I'll be honest with you, if I, if I run a football club and I didn't achieve our goals for seven years, 
I wouldn't think I was doing very well. And the goals of Manchester United Football Club are not about the, just the bottom line. Yeah, of course, the, the, of course it has to make a lot of profit, but it has to deliver performance and results, and it's not. That analogy right there from Gary, spot on. United are a pinball machine. Ball dead, doesn't matter, throw a few more million at it. Hit it, hit it, oh, something's shining. Cool, we'll take that. Ball dead, throw more money at it. Repeat, rinse and repeat. And that has helped create the problem at United. But as much as I feel Gary is right here for pointing out Ed Woodward as a problem, I have to say that I'm disappointed with Gary's lack of public anger towards the Glazers because we all know they are the root of the problem. Yet the Glazers seem to have somehow escaped criticism from Gary Neville. And I think, I feel like it must be on purpose because Gary, you're not a dumb man. You're a very smart man when it comes to Man United. Yet, I never hear you criticise the fact that the Glazers have taken out more than a billion in interest repayments. And they've helped create this marketing culture at United, which has taken over the football inside of the club. I'd like to hear you criticise the Glazers publicly. They are the root of the problem. Ed Woodward might be a major problem. The dressing room might be a major problem. But we all know until the Glazers leave, they're all surface issues. And it does frustrate me somewhat that Gary doesn't criticise the Glazers because they are the cause of it all. However, as I said, Gary makes plenty of good points. And one point that he's absolutely on the money with is calling United search for a sporting director an absolute shambles. No, but Dave, the shambles of last week, it, this is where I'm going, by the way. It's where I'm going now, I've gone. I don't, it takes a lot for me to criticise my own Ten club. Ten seconds. Right. How can it be that four players who have never been businessmen, never managed the club, never coached, never been sporting directors, are, are, are put forward for this amazingly difficult role at the most difficult time, at the biggest club in the world? It's a shambles. Do United genuinely feel that an old boys club can be the solution to our problems right now? With Oli at the wheel, Rio Ferdinand sitting in as, as his co-driver, Darren Fletcher and Mike Phelan in the back looking at the map. Do they feel that is going to replicate what City have done? But City didn't do that. City went and brought in all of Barcelona's technical and sporting staff. Those people who were there through their greatest time. When they had Guardiola as manager, they had Messi, Iniesta, Xavi, Busquets. Yes, they had the squad, but they had the infrastructure behind it. And now they've got the manager and all of Barcelona's technical sporting directors with him. They're the conditions that allow success. Do you really feel that Solskjaer is going to be supported by simply ex-players? No. We need experience. Gary is right here, the best in class. We went for the romance in Solskjaer, and I'm all aboard that. Yes, it's been a terrible end to the season, but I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next year under Solskjaer. But we can't do ex-players throughout the whole club. Are you mad? We don't have the infrastructure. We need to create it first. That's why experience is so essential in this situation. And I think it would be an utter madness for United to go anywhere but experience when it comes to this role. And that is why I agree with Gary when he says it's been a shambles so far. Now to finish, Gary was asked about what his expectations and hopes were for the next season. What's the best you think that you could hope for for Manchester United next season? have 11 players out on that pitch who want to play for the club. That's a starting point. Who want to be there, who run till the last minute of every single match. That is a starting point. Off the pitch you can't control. That's always a starting point of every team. They've got a coaching group there, to be fair, who love the club, who will die for the club. I know that for a fact. People might say, oh, they're not this or they're not that. But what they will, they'll, they'll bleed the club. You know, if you cut them open. So my view is, get a group of players in that dressing room who are aligned and want to do the very best for Manchester United, who see Manchester United as a great football club. There are definitely five or six people in that dressing room that look to me at the moment like they don't want to be there always. I feel it's truly sad that Gary is right here in that the best that United can hope for there is simply getting 11 players who want to play for United. And for me, that's why I've got so much time for Scott McTominay. If you haven't seen this video, this is McTominay after the one-all draw against Huddersfield. Do you see who's sitting on the bench there? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scott yeah. McTominay yeah. Is, is over there on the bench, and he looks smashed. Yeah. He yeah. looks like he's really upset, and he's sitting here by himself, 
And I don't know what to read in this. Maybe he's just tired. Maybe he's physically tired, etc. But it looks like today's draw, which feels like a loss, has hurt him. McTominay is hurting like us fans were after that draw. Yes, he's not the best footballer in the world. Yes, there are better players that we can put in that position. But my God, he's got the attitude that doesn't exist in 90% of that dressing room. And I thought Mourinho was mad at the time for highlighting and praising McTominay so much, but maybe he was right. We need more players in that dressing room that have the attitude and spirit that McTominay has. Look, I know he's not going to be a star like Pogba, but the stars like Pogba and Di Maria and Falcao, have they really helped United recover since Fergie retired? Or have they helped create the mess that we now find ourselves in? It's the latter. And that is why I am so much in the Scott McTominay fan club and think that we need more players like him and Solskjaer will know that as well for us to move forward next season. Because there are so many mercenaries in that dressing room that need to go. And that is another reason why I am happy that Solskjaer is our manager. Because he will rid that dressing room of the wrong attitude. My fear is that you can't do it in one season because there's so much of it. But unlike Mourinho, unlike Van Gaal, unlike Moyes, Solskjaer will do it in the right way. And everyone's going to be like, oh, what's the right, what's the United way? You can't quantify it. But Solskjaer, and it's not just a case of looking back at what happened when he was a player for 12 years and just trying to replicate that. But he's seen what's right and what's wrong. And his measure is better than any previous manager that we've had since Fergie. And that is why I would trust Solskjaer more than anybody to rid this dressing room of the wrong players and bring in the right players. But as I said, I do fear how long it's going to take United on and off the pitch, in and out of the dressing room to catch up with the elite of Europe, to catch up with Liverpool and City and to truly compete again. We are some way off that. I've had a lot of time for what Gary Neville has had to say about United this season. I think more than most pundits, he really truly speaks from the heart, speaks from an analytical point of view, and he's very fair in what he says. And it's good to hear him calling out Ed Woodward for the terrible job that he has done over the last six, seven years. As I did say there, I'm disappointed that he's not calling out the Glazers because they are the cause of the problem, Gary, and they should be getting names publicly. But I wanna hear from you now in the comments. What did you think of what Gary had to say on Monday Night Football about United's problems? Do you like the squad? Do you like Solskjaer? Do you think he is the right man to get rid of this dressing room problem? And how do United properly reset this summer? And what are your expectations for next year? Is Gary wrong in saying that don't even think about a title chase? Do you think United have the ability to do that this summer? I want to know what you think in the comments, as always. If you are still here and you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and get involved. Until next time, take it easy.